one of the most common questions I get asked about AppRight is about our database offering. Is it a relational or a non-relational database? This is something that comes up now more and more often as of late due to AppRight's growing in popularity and the type and size of projects that are using AppRight. Now, to answer the question, AppRite offers a relational database, but the confusion is understandable due to the fact that we use terms like collections, documents, and attributes, as opposed to what more traditional relational databases use like tables, rows, and columns. Now, we use this terminology to simplify the experience when working with our API, which returns JSON data. But as of late, this is actually making things a little bit more confusing, and this is why I'm so excited about the latest update. In our last update, we decided to rethink our entire approach and go back to the more traditional naming conventions. So collections will now be tables, documents will now be rows, and attributes will now be columns. And these changes will both be represented in the AppRite console and with our SDKs. Starting with the console, the first change you'll see is when you open up a database. So here we'll see create table instead of create collection, and we're gonna see a list of tables here. Now we're gonna see rows and columns instead of documents and attributes. And traditionally where we wanted to create an attribute, we now can go to the columns tab and click on create column. And you'll notice that this entire UI is different. This is something that is gonna be addressed in a separate video. So I'll link that down in the video description. I'm gonna talk about why this was all done and all the features here, but for now, we just wanna focus on the terminology. So for rows where we would traditionally create documents, we can now go ahead and create and edit rows right here. Now, when it comes to our SDKs, there's gonna be quite a big change here. So before we get into it, I just wanna reassure you that this will be backwards compatible. So if you're using the old methods, nothing's gonna break. You can continue to use that. Now, if we get into our code base here, traditionally how things would work is we would use this databases class we would create a databases instance. And then from there, we can call methods like list document, get document, create, update, and delete. Now, with this new terminology, we're gonna have this tables class here, and we're gonna create a tables instance with that class. So now we're just gonna call tables.listrows, where we had list documents before. Then we can use that to call get row as opposed to get document then create, update, and delete. Now these are of course just the core CRUD methods. There are a lot more methods that were updated and for those, I'm gonna link up the documentation down in the video description. I would highly recommend you check that out and just get familiar with them. Now this change is something that we're super excited about. We saw it as necessary for the next step as AppRite is being used in production and larger scale applications and it's something that was highly requested by the community as well. So we're excited to make this update and if you're excited about that new UI that you saw, be sure to check out the next video where I talk about this entire console interface because it's pretty exciting. So be sure to check that out.